any topics, questions or discussion? Last time we in, uh, Rashmi introduced this uh, topic of mindfulness. And I uh, added um, how the roots of those practices are in yoga and how we can practice mindful yoga in our own uh, practices. Any questions, observations? practicing Hatha Yoga mindfully. Yeah, for me, Jay, when we do, uh, when we do any new asana, then uh, or very tough asana, then I'm very mindful. But <laughs> when I'm doing as a regular habit, uh, out of regular habit, then when you remind us during that uh, uh, Surya Namaskara that bring your mind here, then yes, I bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, uh, it, it does uh, wander. And that is the uh, nature of the mind to wander. Um, there is a, another way of looking at it. Mind is um, always looking for problems to solve. It is always looking to learn, solve problems. Even if something had happened earlier, Mind wants to digest that again to see if there is anything more to that. <laughs> obviously, if future, if there is a problem to be solved, obviously it is in the normal problem solving mode. Um, and so mind is a wonderful tool. It's a <laughs> it's the best tool that we have. <laughs> um, best computing power um, in the world, really. Um, and yet, the tool uh, becomes a problem. The tool itself is not a problem. The way we use the tool becomes a problem. Like, a, let's say, a knife. We can use a knife to cook, uh, and we can use a knife to kill. Sometimes we use a knife to hurt ourselves. <laughs> and so it is with the mind. It is always going, dis getting distracted, meaning what it is, looking for some other problem to solve. Whether that problem is really needing the attention or not, it is looking for problems to solve. And to um, to find your edge in a posture, when I say diligently practice, finding that edge brings your mind to this problem. <laughs> so Hatha Yoga, they have figured this out, right? When you diligently practice, even if, um, let's say you're sitting, right? Let's say Sunil is sitting down, Vinay is sitting down, Manjit is sitting down. It's just a seated posture to see how comfortable we are. We are always shifting around. See, I always touch my face. You know, I do something here. There is something that I'm unconsciously with the, with the, with my mind asking for some action. My body is always doing something. <laughs> right. And, and in Hatha Yoga practice, diligent practice, when you are in the practice and you're trying to find the edge, let us say I'm trying to sit comfortably straight. And that is, I am usually like that, I am straight, sitting straight like that. Now, when we are playing that edge, 
the mind is trying to solve this problem. And this problem is a present problem right now. Not something that had happened earlier, not something that is a problem that is later, but right now, okay, how do I maintain this posture? And so um, it is a tool. It is a wonderful tool. And it is always looking to solve problems. In Hatha Yoga practice, we present present problems. Uh, we present our mind with present problems right now. How do I diligently practice this? How do I sit straight? Um, and that is a mind practice. Um, I think Ankit or someone was saying, I practice um, yoga and I feel relaxed, but my mind is uh, not um, stabilized. To, to stabilize the mind, you bring attention to the practice and you diligently practice. When you're diligently practice, you are finding the edge. And when you're finding the edge, the mind cannot be anywhere else. <laughs> And that is why I keep repeating diligent practice. If you're diligently practicing, mind will be, mind will have to be here. Does that make sense? I rattled off for some time. Any thoughts, questions, observations? Jay Vinay here. So uh, one, one thing, so after listening uh, this, if suppose we are doing yoga morning, just it's a, uh, other uh, question so uh, doing yoga morning or doing yoga in evening so after if i uh, connect everything and conclude then because we are blank uh, in a morning and uh, we are like uh, we have come body is completely relaxed so morning is more uh, like a uh, uh, fruitful co compared to evening uh, is it? So it is recommended to practice morning and evening <laughs> okay <laughs> um, practice in the morning and practice in the evening and you can use uh, our video sessions record sessions to or whichever if you can do self practice or play the video and practice if you can allocate time in the morning and in the evening uh, that is recommended in hatha yoga pradipika this is 16th century text this is uh, this is authentic text on Hatha Yoga, morning and evening. Yeah. Good. Um, if there are no questions about the mind being a tool, a sharp tool, let's use the tool or let's engage the tool by diligently practicing whatever the posture is. And with that, let us begin again. Sitting comfortably straight. Eyes softly closed. Three deep breaths. Let's engage our mind. observing the breath. Nothing to solve, but just to observe.
nothing to solve, as in we want the body and mind to relax. And yet, alert to observe. Relaxed and alert. None of us have to prove anything to anybody. This is not a test. This is not a, a competition. We all are wonderfully complete already. And so relax with that understanding. And alert to observe whatever is going on. body and mind. Bring your attention to the heart center and observe the breath at your heart center. And continue to observe your breath at the heart center. You can even bring the attention a little bit higher toward the throat and find a spot, comfortable spot between the heart and the throat. Rest your awareness there and observe the breath. Let us chant Makara. Makara is mm, like that. Take a deep breath. Mm. Normal breath. Continue to have your attention top of the chest. In second round of Makara chanting, take a deep breath. Another deep breath. Palms to the heart center, Namaskaram Dra. Tilt your head forward. Gently open your eyes. Inhaling, arms by the side, palms by the looking up. 
exhaling, thumbs coming down, looking down, inhaling up, exhaling down, inhaling, exhaling down. Inhaling, exhaling down, inhaling up, exhaling down, one last round, inhaling up, exhaling down, release, come to Sukhasana. Normal cross leg posture. Inhaling, look up. Exhaling, look down. Four more rounds. Inhaling, look up. Exhaling, down. After completing, take a deep breath, exhale. Inhaling center, exhaling, turn your head to the right. Look through the corner of your eyes. Inhaling center, exhaling, go the other way. Inhaling center, four more rounds. Find the edge as you turn your head. After completing, take a deep breath, exhale. Head tilting postures, inhaling center, exhaling. Drop your right ear to the right shoulder. Inhaling. Exhaling, left ear to the left shoulder. Nose pointing forward, inhaling. Four more rounds. And as you tilt your head, find the edge. As you find the edge, your mind automatically pays attention to the current sensation, the present sensations. And that is also very important to avoid crossing the edge and causing injury. So playing or practicing diligently is a safe way to practice. Not playing safe, but practicing diligently. After completing, take a deep breath, exhale. Stretch your legs to the front. Place your palms behind you. 
lift the right leg, lean back a bit and lift the right leg up. Rotate your ankle five times clockwise, five times anti-clockwise. If you want, you can lean back further with the elbows down if that helps you lift the leg further up. Rotate just the ankle. And after that, lower the right leg down, left leg up and rotate the left foot, just the foot around the ankle. Like make circles with, with your foot. After that, release and come up to sitting. Take a deep breath, exhale. Arms up, palms facing the front. Inhaling, reach up. Exhaling, bend from the hips forward with the palms reaching the ground and head down. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Inhaling, come up. Exhaling, release the arms. Come to squatting. If you need to put your palms in front of you to stabilize, do that. Feet hip width apart or wider, however you want it. You're flat on your feet. If you're either flat on your feet or on your toes, if you're not able to land the heels down, squatting. Come to squatting, feet flat. And you can put your feet on the ground in front if you need support. Now, those who are not able to, it is okay. You can support yourself with the palms in the front or you're supporting yourself, you're balancing yourself on your toes. That is okay. Now, place the palms in front of you be between your feet closer to the feet not not you can it can be a bit in front not a problem yes comfortably so now lean bend the elbows and lean forward a bit just a bit and then take the heels down as you take the knees down to the front heels down to the back knees down to the front towards the front and heels down to the ground. You should feel the intense stretch on your calf muscle. Five, four, three, two, one. Come up to, come back to straight. Are you able to feel the calf muscle stretch? Give me a thumbs up if you can see that. Vinay? Are you getting a calf stretch? Okay, good, good. Yeah, Manjit gave a thumbs up. How about you, Sunil? Were you getting a calf muscle stretch? Give me a thumbs up if you if you are getting it. A bit of, uh, only like, I'm not sure I'm doing it right or not. Yeah, take the knee, knee, like, knees toward the front and down, heels toward the back and down. If the heels are already down, keep the heels down, but take the knees forward and down. Yeah. Keep the heels down and take the knees down toward. Yeah. Yes, you can see that very nice. Let's repeat this again. You can take support of the palms in front of you. If you are already having the heels down, simply take the knees down. And if you are not able to land the heels down, 
take the knees down to the front while you take the heels down to the back. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Straighten up to squat. Malasana. Palms pressing against each other. Elbows inside the knees. Straighten up the spine as much as you can. Knees inside the, uh, sorry, elbows inside the knees. You, if you need to separate your feet further, do that. Vine, take the elbows inside the knees. Elbows inside the knees. Inside, the, yes. And gently um, separate the knees. Gently separating the knees. Five. Four. Three. Two, one. This is a malasana, actually preparation. Now, with your hands, hold on to the inner arches of your feet. With your hands, the inner arches of your right hand catches the right inner arch of your right foot. Left hand catches the left. Now, head down, seat bones up. Head down, bring the seat bones up. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands on your waist. Inhaling, come up. Release arms. Front of the mat, Tadasana. Namaskar Mutra. Three rounds of Surya Namaskara. Diligently practicing every posture. Begin. Every posture, every transition, diligently done, coordinating coordinated with inhalations or exhalations.
if the mind has wandered to look for other problems to solve there is no real problems to solve as we are practicing hatha yoga it's a, it's a discovery process not a problem solving process it's a discovery process so let us engage the mind in discovering what is right now what is happening right now the yoga journey is not really one of getting something that we don't have it is a process of discovering what we already have always have so there is nothing to solve nothing to gain that you don't already have it is to discover our own inherent completeness he is the path of yoga three deep breaths no since um, we already uh, started doing some stretches on the calf muscles all of that in preparation for forward bending postures let us see where we are right now feet hip width apart from a forward bending posture perspective hands on your waist inhale growing taller exhale bending forward keep the knees straight keep the knees straight bend forward keep the knees straight um sunil you might want to slightly relax the knee if you have a knee problem otherwise keep the knees straight allow the arms to hang loose head down keep the knees straight now you might be reaching the ground or you might not be reaching the ground with your fingers if you are not already reaching the ground see if you can with your middle finger touch the shin those who are able to touch the ground take your middle finger toward the back wall as far as you can take no aggression no bouncing needed just your your kind of discovering where the edge is that's all head down 5 4 3 2 1 slightly bend the knees hands on your waist inhaling come up release the arms with the um, calf stretch practice that we already did you might be feeling a little bit more freedom than usual now we are going to build on that take it take another deep breath feet 6 inches apart walk your right foot back by 2 feet hands on the waist now start keep the back foot flat on the mat and start bending the front knee to feel the stretch on the back leg back of your back leg like in virabhadrasana kind of a posture except your back toes are pointing more or less forward 
you should feel the stretch on the back of your back leg hands on the waist and you can start keep bending the front knee to get more and more stretch with the back foot heel down five four three two one inhaling straighten up the front knee take a deep breath exhale now keep the stance exactly the same now we are going to stretch the front leg back of the front leg in a different posture inhale center keep the front knee straight exhaling bending forward now you will feel in intense stretch the back of your front leg five more on your hamstring than on your depending on your edge today three two one inhaling straighten up walk your back foot forward release the arm stand relaxed take a deep breath exhale feet six inches apart hands on your waist walk your left foot back comfortably back now keep the back heel down bend the right knee in the front and feel the stretch on the back of your left leg 5 4 3 2 1 straighten up the front knee take a deep breath exhale inhale keep the front knee straight exhaling bending forward from the hips head down Five, four, three, two, one. Inhaling, straighten up. Walk your left foot forward. Release the arms. Take a deep breath. Exhale. feet hip with the part hands on your waist inhale growing taller exhaling bending from the hips forward if you need you can slightly bend the knees to bend further forward slightly bend the knees to bend further forward now drop your arms and hold your elbows like in a cradle head down now consciously bend your knees to place your abdomen on the thighs as much of the abdomen on the thighs as you can bend the knees enough to place as much of the abdomen on the thighs up to the knees if you can bend the knees uh, vinay you can even bend the knees more bend the knees more yes abdomen on the thighs as much as you can manjit you can also bend your knees even more yes 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 sunil i am not able to observe you but head down now with all your attention keep the abdomen and the thighs as close and straighten the knees only as much as you can keeping the abdomen and thighs as close as you had and when they start separating stop and relax your shoulders relax your head 5 4 
one hands on your waist inhaling come out see what we did by bending the knees we are not stretch trying to stretch the hamstring or calf as much when the knees are slightly bent the the stretch on the calf and the hamstring is less but that gives you a platform to stretch the back of your upper body from the hips all the way to the head on your back now we are going to do the same thing with prasarita stands bring your feet wide broad stance toes slightly pointing toward each other hands on the waist let's do a gentle back bend move the hips forward shoulder blades going toward each other on the back chest comes toward the front drop your head only if you're comfortable 5 4 3 2 1 inhaling come on take a deep breath now you can as i said bend your knees the idea is to get your spine closer to the thighs as much as you can even with the bent knees inhale exhaling bending forward you can bend the knees enough to allow the spine to reach as close to the chest sorry to the thighs as possible if you are able to hang your spine down vertically do that the roof the, um, head down and arms hanging loose and then hold the elbows now consciously bend the knees to receive your abdomens closer to the thighs as much as you can and then keeping the abdomen and the thighs as close to each other as you have now consciously straighten up the knees just as much as you can shoulders completely relaxed head completely relaxed Five, four, three, two, one. Hands on the waist. Inhaling, straighten up. Bring your feet comfortably closer. Release your arms. Prasarita Padasana variations. take a deep breath exhale feet 6 inches apart you can even have hip with the part if that's comfortable hands on the waist inhale exhaling keep the knee straight bend forward as much as you can keep the knee straight bend forward arms hanging loose head down head down arms hanging loose see if your fingers reach the ground and if they reach the ground walk your fingers toward the back wall head down others can you can place your fingers on your shin or ankle 5 4 3 Two, one. Hands on your waist. Inhaling, come up. Release the arms. Take a deep breath. Exhale. Standing tall. Allow the chin to the chest. Head down. Chin toward the chest. Shoulders relaxed. 
and if you can reach the chest with your chin, do that. And you will feel as you are holding your shoulders relaxed, you will feel the stretch on the upper shoulders, upper back, neck. And you might even feel these differently on right side and left side. Five, four. Two, one, inhaling, straighten up the head, stand relaxed. We did a um, foot stretch, foot and calf stretch. We did the hamstring stretch. We did the upper back or up, the back stretch. Upper back stretch, neck stretch. Now let us approach Pad Hastasana practice. Feet hip width apart. Now we are going to place our palms, or we're going to stand up on the palms with our hands below the feet with the back of the hands on the mat, palms up and you're going to stand up on the palms. And that is Pada Hastasana practice. Take a deep breath. Feet hip width apart. Sunil, you need a slightly closer stance. Yeah, hip width apart, yes. Because you're going to place your palms underneath your feet. Not closer than hip width. Otherwise, your arms will have to your hands will have to get closer together and that will cause different dynamics on your back and chest. So get your feet hip width apart. Arms up, palms facing the front. Let us just practice this. Inhaling, growing taller, your middle fingers reaching for the sky, palms facing the front. Five, four, three, two, one. Next exhalation, bending forward from the hips all the way down. Now, if your palms, if you are able to place the palms down on the mat with the knee straight, you're flexible. If not, bend the knees so you, you're, you can place the palms on the ground in front of you, just in front of you. Now, place, lift your right foot toes up and place the right hand underneath the right foot with your actually you're standing on your palms the back of the hand on the mat um Vine, lift your right foot up right toes up toes toes up right toes up now place your right hand underneath the right foot yes you're standing on your right palm similarly Stand on your left palm with the back of the left hand on the mat. Now flatten your back, look to the front and up. Flatten your back as much as you can. Straighten the knees as much as you can and flatten your back as much as you can. Five. Four, three, two, one. Next exhalation with that extended spine. Allow the abdomen to go toward the thighs, head down. Completely relaxed head. And straighten up the knees 
enough or as much as you can with the abdomen staying close to the thighs. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Take the hands from underneath your feet. Hands on the waist. Inhaling, come on. Release arms, stand relaxed. Lie down on your back. Feet cl close together, arms close to the body, palms down. Bend your knees. And this itself might give you a certain relief. Even with the legs down, you might get a certain relief. Now, a gentle Sayad Bandha Sarvangasana practice. Next inhalation, lift the hips up as much as you can without any aggression. Relax the shoulders, only the back of your hips and glutes are engaged to keeping the hips up. And the back of the legs also might be engaged, five, four, Three, two, one. Slowly lower the hips down. Hug the knees. Rock back and forth. Side to side. Separate your arms to the sides, shoulder height, knees close to the chest. Keep both shoulders on the ground and drop both your knees toward your right elbow. Keep both shoulders on the ground. Look over your left shoulder. Five. Four, three, two, one. Bring the knees back to the center and drop the knees toward your left elbow. Keep both shoulders on the ground and look over your right shoulder. Five, four, three. Two, one, bring the knees to the center. Release the legs and make any final movements that you feel like you need. And then proceed to Shavasana. Letting go of your body completely. Remember, we don't have to solve any problem. If the mind 
is looking for some problems. Bring the attention to your breath. And engage the mind in observing this fresh breath. And then this fresh breath. And then this fresh breath. And then this fresh breath. Nothing to improve, nothing to solve, nothing to run away from, nothing to hold on to. Let go. Gently move your fingers and toes and come out of Shavasana. Take your time sitting up. any comfortable seated posture. Gently take your hands, catch the left wrist with the right hand. Inhale, growing taller. Exhaling, bending forward from the hips, thanking Mother Earth. Inhale, come up. Rub your palms vigorously, generating heat. Massage your closed eyes with your palms. Gently blink your eyes open. Namaste. Thank you for giving me this opportunity and have a great evening ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay. Thank, Thank you, Jay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Thank you.